Welcome back to Elden Ring. In this video, I'm going to be showing you an insane build that is completely new to this channel and it's insane for a few reasons. So just quickly before we do get into it, if you are not currently sub to the channel, make sure you do sub turn notifications on. If you enjoy the video, don't forget to leave a like. All support is greatly appreciated. And if you want to support me further as a creator, then check out the links in the description. And let's get into it. So we are taking a look at an Elden Ring bleed build but not specifically bleed. And when you do power this up, it is OP. And I would say purely because of the attack speed, but there is not just one use to this build. There are multiple. So starting off, we have the Chinquadea, which is a dagger that has quick steps, so the skill's not too great. The attack power is really high for a dagger. And you will not be dealing bleed with this. It's just like, a, it's basically a secondary weapon. However, we will be running it in our main hand because the skill is just much better than what I would put on this secondary weapon. So this requires 10 strength and 10 dex. It's got B scaling for strength when it's plus 9. And then we have in our offhand another dagger being the Great Knife so that we can power stance and get the unique moveset from them. I've chucked blood tax on there, I'm not too bothered about it. It's just that I wanted the blood loss build up to turn this into a bleed build. And here's one of the things that makes this build insane. It's probably a little bit out there, not many people are going to go for it. But it's something that's unique and is like an off meta build. So this has scaling with strength, arcane and dexterity. Dex being A... And it requires 12 dex and 6 strength. You'll see the physical attack power is not as much as the Chinquadea. But if you have a look at the build in general based on the two weapons, you have a blood loss build up, you have a dexterity scaling weapon, then you also have a strength scaling weapon. So there's bleed, strength, dex, and arcane, like a little bit of arcane because of the blood loss build up. But then if we go in and have a look at the Chinquadea, if you have a look, it's a short sword given to high-ranking clergyman of Faramazula raises the potency of bestial incantations. The design celebrates a beast's five fingers, symbolic of the intelligence once granted upon their kind. And then quick step is like Bloodhound step, but you don't go invisible and it's not actually got that much range. So not only do you have bleed, strength, and dex, you've also got a potency raise for bestial incantations. So if you wanted to run those, this is going to benefit that sort of a build. So it's a multi-purpose build, and not only that, these daggers, and I think any dagger in the game, has a really, really fast successive attack moveset. So in the armor slots, the only thing you're going to need to worry about is the raptor's black feathers. Obviously, there's blood in the build, so if you can get your hands on the white mask, then grab that as well. In terms of the talismans, we have the claw talisman for the jump attacks. So a lot of jumping with this build, like most melee builds in the game. Radagon Saw Seal is being used just to boost my stats a little bit. Lord of Blood's Exaltation, if you've got the white mask, that will stack with that very nicely. And then because of the successive attacks and how fast you are going to get them, Rotten Winged Sword Insignia. Then moving into the Flask of Wondrous Physic, Thorny Cracked Tear because that will stack with the Rotten Winged Sword Insignia. And then the Dexterity Knock Crystal Tear just to boost my decks up a little bit further. Because if we take a look at the physical, 225 and a bonus of 197, my strength is at 55. And then if we have a look at the Great Knife... I've got 151 and 183, but this has A tier scaling for dexterity, and mine is only 45. So if I could get that up to 60, maybe even a little bit higher, that physical attack power could be buffed even further. But that's a look at the build, and you don't need to buff this one up. You can just go in and attack. So I'm going to drink my flask to boost the successive attacks, and that's all we're going to do. It's a little bit tough to attack some enemies... But you'll see when I am attacking, just how fast you actually pull these attacks off. So if I stand there and just do my left bumper, you'll see just how crazy the daggers are. And there are lots and lots of successive attacks in the moveset. And then you'll see just a single attack is still fairly fast, obviously not as fast, but it's pretty good. 
So now up on mountain tops of the giants, if I drink my flask again, we're going to jump in for the first attack against this guy when he places that foot. There we go. So you'll see a 1600, but look at how fast that builds up because of the successive attacks. We got a nice like 8 or 9k out of that. I didn't see it properly. So you'll see it's small amounts of damage per hit, but you get so many hits so quick, it does use a lot of stamina. But there, right towards the end, it was like 2900 from one swing. So if you do have the Cinque Dea, it can be put in so many different builds. You can pop it into a bleed build like I have. You can put it into a strength build because it scales with strength. You can put it into a bestial incantation build. There are so many uses for this dagger. But with the moveset being so fast when you power stance two daggers, I think it's probably best in a bleed build. And what we're going to do is leave the video there. Let me know your thoughts and stuff in the comments. As well as if you think this would be better in a build other than bleed. And I will see you guys in the next one. I hope you enjoyed it.